Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. It's unboxing time, and this really is the last orchids this year, <laughs> and probably for some time next year as well. Um, those of you who've ever bought from uh, Speciotic Plants will recognise the box. So that's where they've come from, and I think um, after the last box went missing, I think um, special arrangements were made for this. Um, it's Tuesday today. It's early on Tuesday. These were dispatched yesterday on Monday, and they're here today. It doesn't get any better than that, does it? And given, given that we're in for a cold snap, it's probably uh, a bonus. Letter this time. Don't normally get a letter. Oh, it's a little bit of a care guide. I don't remember them doing that before. Oh, just a general guide. That's nice. And wishing me a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Yeah, nice little touch. The invoice. Right, let's see what we got then. There's two plants in here. Um, I'm very reluctant when people give massive discounts after the first purchase <coughs> for shipping. I always think it pays to take advantage of it. You know, whereas like the first plant and certainly this, this eBay seller, the postage is exceptionally reasonable. Um, even with the larger plants, you're paying less than five pounds for shipping. I mean, in this day and age, you know, Germany's 17, 18 pounds to send a plant. Outrageous. Um, not all of them, but some of them. Um, but uh, the postage is always exceptionally good. You know, it's cheap. And um, I think the first plant was, uh, I don't know, some, somewhere around five pounds or just under. But the second plant was only two pounds. You know, that's almost like getting it sent for nothing, isn't it? Right, nicely packed, um, bubble wrapped, and as usual, a steak put in the pot, cut to the length of the box. So it can't move, it can't waggle around. This is good. Right, I can see little splashes of colour inside. You can't have enough twinkles, can you? <laughs> this is um this is a replacement, although the original was lost a very long time ago. Um, a long time ago I did what I called a ceramis project and I put quite a lot of my orchids in ceramis. I could only get hold of the small stuff, which is nowhere near as good as the larger grade, I must admit. And I stood them in trays of water, so like, you know, semi-hydro I suppose you'd call it, or even hydro. Um, but it didn't work. Plants stayed far too wet around the base of the plants and a lot of them started to rot. And unfortunately, in amongst them was the odd plant, Ad Fusarium. And because they were all stood in trays of water, all of them got it. That was a quick way to spread it around. Um, so bad news on that front. And I had this particular twinkle. It's normally called red. I don't know what this one's uh, actually on the label. Red Fantasy, yeah. It isn't a true red, it's a it's a deep pink. But you have to bear in mind, you know, that the, the, the twinkles are some of the easiest oncidiums to grow. They've got the vigour of the, one of the parents, Sotoannum, um, you know, so you can practically guarantee at least one new growth off of every mature growth. So they clump up quite quickly, which is good. You know, you get a nice big strong plant quite early on in its life. And um, prolific bloomers, often two spikes per pseudobulb. So, you know, they're, they're just good little plants to have. And being, 
as far as oncidiums go, relatively small. <laughs> you know, you can get quite a few in a small space. Um, right, so uh, what have we got? We've got a plant that's buried far too deep, and it's in that coconut stuff. I'll live with that for now, but not for much longer. Um, the, the trouble is, this, this media is very good but it's very difficult to control watering, especially in the cooler winter months. It can stay wet for flipping ages. And um, that plant's been buried far too deep. Um, sorry, I'm just gonna sneak it out of the pot and see what we've got. <laughs> ah, it's in a net pot. We've got a very good root system, brilliant. And as it's in a net pot, quite honestly, it can just come out of its shielding pot and be left like that for now. A few aerial roots won't hurt and that means it'll dry quicker. Um, either that or just stand it in a slightly larger pot so it gets a bit more air around it. But in bloom, stacks of spikes, many more buds to come. <laughs> oh, now that smells of chocolate. That smells just like Shari Baby, quite honestly. That's a bonus because the Twinkles do have a variety of fragrances. Some are a bit vanilla-y, honey vanilla, various things. So anyway, a nice additional twinkle to the collection and a replacement. As I say, I lost my other one in the Ceramus project. So I've now got the tiny twinkle, which is white, with a bit of yellow, splash of yellow in the middle. They've nearly all got that as an oncidium trait. And then I've got um, the newly acquired one with a posh name that's actually a cross back with Soto Anum that's a peachy pink sort of colour. That's that one. I've now got this one that's called red, although it's just a very deep pink. It has got some red in it though, so that's that one. I've got the yellow one and I've got the cinnamon one. So that's the set, quite honestly. <laughs> so that's that one. <coughs> and there's a tiny splash of colour on here, although the bloom is going over. I can see it already before I unwrap it. But there's another bud to come. And yes, that is another one of the one that was lost. I was over the moon when I saw this come up. This is my daughter's favourite Master Valia of all time. And once upon a time when she, um, when she couldn't work because of her um, health, um, she spent quite a lot of money and quite a lot of persuading getting a guy at the RHS show to um, sell her one of these out of the display, which they're not supposed to do. And um, it was a con. When we got it home and it came round to repot it, it was three separate plants squashed into one pot to make it look like a really large, healthy, mature plant, and it was far from it. Um, so uh, that was one that was lost. Um, I've all, I was given one a long time ago, that didn't last long, and I've bought one, and that didn't last long. So you might think, why the hell am I buying another one? I'm buying another one because it's a good one. And half of the battle with this is starting off with a good one, yes, and starting it off in my environment at the coolest time of year. Yeah, that'll give it chance to get going and become acclimatized to here <laughs> before it has to do battle with any heat, which it's gonna get. But we have got a lovely root system on there. And I'm gonna lift it out. Oh, I'm happy with that. Excellent. So we've got a good start point. Stacks of new growths. We've got a bloom that looks like it's about to open and another one following on. And this is Mazdavalia ignea. And this is not a cool grower, it's a cold grower. <laughs> so you might think, well, it's not gonna survive in the summer, but I think it will because it's starting off strong and healthy. I mean, look at the root system on it. Now it's in virtually in pure moss. <laughs> and that smells of moss. It doesn't smell of mushrooms. So it's not been in there a huge amount of time. And it might end up staying in there for its uh, 
first season with me. I need this to be well established in here, in the cool, before we start getting any heat. Um, the bloom's not properly open yet. You'll be the first to see it when it is. It's one of the best colours, quite large blooms, and as Mazda Valleys go, not a bad sized plant. Um, I mean, this plant is climbing. Yeah, you can see that a lot of the new growths have pushed their way out of the pot. It's got such a good root system. So a lot of the base of the plant is away from the moss and new roots are pushing out effectively into the air. But they will get down in the moss. Now, I may repot it, but not now, um, but maybe soon. So Mazda Valia Ignea. And for me, this will probably be classed as my most difficult plant, but I'm willing to try. As I say, I'll show you this bloom once it fully opens. The, cut, the depth of colour is absolutely stunning. So there we go. That's the one that I bought that got lost in the post. And I was just hoping that they would manage to get another one, which they have, and I've got it. I am over the moon. That is two really good plants. And um, you're looking at... £13 a plant. Now in this day and age with orchid prices, and I hate to think what they're going to be next year if, um, if Brexit falls apart, which it looks like it might, um, and the, the, the EU sellers won't then be able to just transport plants without the paperwork. So that's going to, everything is just going to fall apart if that happens. But yeah, I mean, that's two £13 plants, £13 something. Uh, 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 it's just such good value, you know. I think the trouble is with speciotic plants is I don't think they've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of plants because quite honestly, if they did have, they ought to become a trader and start going to some shows. But it depends where they get their plants from and how easily they can replace them. Because if they took, let's say they took most of their plants to a show and sold most of them, they then got no stock. <laughs> and quite honestly, they do really well on eBay, so I suspect they're happy with the way they trade. Um, they do their own labels, so, uh, yeah. Very pleased, two new plants, who always make room for a twinkle. <laughs> and the Mazda Valia Ignea is gonna be sat right in the line of fire of one of my little computer fans. And I mean right in the line of fire, about a foot away, the leaves will move. I'm going to keep that as cool as I possibly can. And then hopefully, starting off with a lovely, strong, healthy plant, I can actually keep the flipping thing alive this time. I must admit, it is one of my favourite Mazda values. So there we go, two new plants. That will be the, certainly the last for this year. And I probably won't be buying any now for some considerable time. So... Uh, That'll be it for a while, I'm sure, but well worth it and very well pleased. Two good plants. Both have got good root systems. You know, it's, it's a bonus nowadays. A lot of the plants you buy, you get them home, you have a quick look in the pot, and all the media falls off because there's no roots holding it together. These are good plants. Well pleased. Thank you, Sousa. And I think I may have had some special treatment because the last box got lost. So instead of the normal post, I've got a feeling this may have been paid a bit extra for, like first class, and tracked. I had to sign for this, and the last box wasn't tracked. So I think a bit of extra care went into getting me my two plants after the last failed delivery. Not the seller's fault. And I got me refund, I'm over the moon. Um, no... Not even a hint of a grey mark, let alone a black mark. I was dealt with incredibly favourably. So, good stuff. See you next time. Bye for now.